Welcome ladies and gents to another Tribes Ascend video with me, your host Connor. And today I'm going to be showing you how to have some fun and just generally be a nuisance with the Juggernaut. Now, this is the class that I play the most in this game. I love the Juggernaut, my favourite class. And what I find him useful for is actually getting inside the gen room or just bombarding the crap out of what is that turret bombarding the crap out of the actual sorry the flag area with your motor as you can see there I'm having some trouble actually getting in I'm trying to concentrate on the recording which isn't good but what I'm going to try and do right now is to get into the generator room and cause as much trouble as I possibly can and let's just see if I can get a few allies into attack the actual generator room. Uh, let's see. Uh, generator? G. Nope. Wrong button. Uh, attack and G. So hopefully now somebody's going to be on their way over to help me. And I think there is somebody in. No, there is nobody inside whatsoever. And there's just Okay, we've got a sentinel in there. And I'm just going to fire a few mortars down here, see if I can drive them out. Oh, there's somebody else down there. He's got a friend. I think you're going, mate, huh? Ah, what are you, you're going? No, you're not. Not going anywhere. The juggernaut will not let you move. Oh, 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 we got another juggernaut. Okay, we got another juggernaut. Okay, my friggin... Ah, oh, damn it. Ah, I had one ally. Or there's two now. There's a freaking infiltrator, but it would take a combined effort to get in there. I would need at least two other people to actually hold their generator room and keep their generator down. And there's been many, many games where I actually... Uh, defend with two others. It usually works in three man cells, three man, uh, three man groups, and it's a very, very, very useful way of keeping the generator down and making it easier for the flag capper to run in, grab the flag, and get out. He just stole a kill. North man. Okay, let's see if he likes motor rounds firing at my allies. I really don't think he will. No, he doesn't that like it at all. Get a frag down there. Let's see if I can get another more out. Ah, damn it! There's not enough of us here. The team seems to spread out thin. They don't really know what they're doing. Let's see if I can get them a little bit more organized here with the generator. It's all well and good using the console uh, chat, but it would this game for the teamwork that I'm talking about would usually need a group. And there's something interesting. If anyone's interested in playing Star uh, StarCraft competitively or, or watch any StarCraft, I was actually in a game uh, versus or against White Ra. If you've ever heard of White Ra, pretty big in StarCraft too. Him and uh, I think it was a few of his friends, or maybe it was a clan. He must have only started the game. He wasn't really getting any kills, or he kept trying to cap the flag, but wasn't doing that well. And uh, damn it, was well. His he had a teammate who had like 40 kills, a ridiculous amount of kills, and all. Kept capturing the flag, was hitting the amount of blue plate specials he got was unbelievable. This is going to turn into more of a sort of playthrough than a tactics video. But I'm going to show you another thing you can do, especially in this map. This map is very, very, very good for the uh, juggernauts. You can bombard the flag carrier up here. Oh, I just missed somebody there. I love just bombarding the crap out of this area with the actual mortar. Because it allows for your... F they will move out of the road if there's a... Doombringer up there, standing on top of the flag, he will move. 
with a few well placed mortar rounds. He won't stand up there and take it. He is he is a heavy class, but he's not that bloody heavy to stand against the juggernaut. And it doesn't look like I'm doing too well this game whatsoever. And our, oh, we're winning, we're winning 4. Well, 4-0. Four that's not too bad, that's not too bad. But I was hoping to show you more, an in, sorry, an in, more in-depth look at how the generator room works. But there's not, um, uh, sorry, enough of our team in there, or trying to get in there. There's maybe one or two of us trying to get inside. But not a full. We need about three to move in together. We need. I'd say an infiltrator moving from the back entrance, which is just below uh, the actual flag point there, down to the right of it. An infiltrator in there, while uh, say me and uh, what the hell is that? Well, oh, yeah, bastards, get that down you. Oh, killed. Right. The mortar is incredibly useful in this close quarters combat because of the radius that it explodes and the AOE damage it does. It's really, really useful for the combat in these uh, corridors. As you can see that I'm demonstrating right now, very, very useful weapon to have. Incredibly, yeah, incredibly useful. But unless you've got teammates backing you up, you're gonna fail because tribes it is as described in the name. Tribes of sand. Tribes, a group of people working co uh, cooperatively for the greater good of the um, tribe. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a few more shots off here at this flag point. In case anybody stand up there. Oh, and another thing, you can't actually take down turrets. Tur very, very useful indeed for taking down the enemy defenses. Quite rusty with this game. Been trying to unlock different classes. We've been playing a lot of the Pathfinder for flag capping and the like. As you can see there, it's pretty simple once you get used to the actual range of the motor. There's fucking turrets up there, I hate turrets. I despise turrets. And come here, you fucking bastard. You, you picking on him? Oh no. Anyway, this has been Connor with My What Are Addiction Gaming. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up or even just subscribe, I do upload all the time, I'm pretty active on YouTube, so thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time.